Hey, Seth David here for SchoolofBookkeeping.com, bringing to you a special screencast. This time we're talking about how to pass an Excel test. So I got an email this week from a recruiting company. The uh, basis of the email was that I, I had to go into an office that day at 1 p.m. and take this Excel test. And I said, oh my God, what if I fail? So uh, I thought it'd be fun to bring up their mock Excel test. I guess this isn't the actual test, but it's to give you an idea of what the test might look like. And uh, I thought it was a good opportunity to use that as a way of showing you what you might get if you're somebody who's out there looking for work as a bookkeeper, let's say, who will need to have some Excel skills in order to perform the required job functions. So let's take a look. We've got the mock Excel test up here. and the first instruction is italicize the entire row for product D27. So we'll come over here, click and drag across, and we'll italicize it. You can click right there, or you can press Control I. Or you can come over here where it says font and click that little doohickey, and it'll bring up my format cells dialog. And over here, you can choose italic. So many ways so many ways let's see change the font to red before the entire for the entire column of q3 so we want this whole column to be red okay so i click and drag to highlight the whole column now they don't really make it clear if they want me to include the headers but let's say they don't over here i can click red or i can again click the little doohickey under font choose color red there we go next insert a column after q2 and title it half year so over here I can select the entire column D right click and insert and since I have an entire column highlighted it knows to insert an entire column and I can say half year the other way is and let's undo Assuming I don't have the whole column highlighted, I can right click, choose insert, and then it'll ask me, what do I want to insert? Just shift cells down, entire row, entire column. So let's say I choose entire column, boom, we're there again. Pretty easy. The other way is while I've got a cell selected, let's say in column D, or the whole thing selected, all the way up over here, insert, insert cells, insert sheet columns, insert sheet. Let's insert sheet columns. Again, many ways, half year. Next instruction, insert the column half, in the column half year, calculate the average of Q1 and Q2 revenue for each product. Easy, equals average. Okay, notice Excel autofill, so equals AV, and it comes up with a list of functions that start with the letters AV. I can use my down arrow just because I can see that average is there amongst them. And once I know that I've got that one selected and that's the one I want, I can hit the tab key. And then all I have to do is click and drag over the cells that I want averaged and close the parentheses. Once I've got that in place, I can control C, copy, shift down arrow to highlight, control V to paste very very easy to do next create a row under G10 label this row total so create a row under G10 that doesn't make sense create a row under G10 I think they mean create a column in G under G10 I don't know it's very con that that's actually very confusing instructions create a row under G10, label this row total. I don't know. What I would be doing, of course, is over here on four, A14, total, and then calculate the total revenue for each quarter. So uh, whoever made this test fails. Total average. And what did I do? Let's go over that slowly. <clears throat> One quick way, alt equals and that's an auto sum, right? So Excel figures out that I have a column of numbers above me. 
and it figures out exactly what I need, and I just hit enter, then control C, right arrow, shift right arrow, control V to paste, and I'm done. I'm home free. I'm ready to I'm ready to rock and roll. <clears throat> now, there are other ways. I can come over here to my formulas, right? And here's the auto sum button. Sum average count and so on. That'd be another way of getting the average, by the way, that we did before. So I can click auto sum that way. Or I can just manually type equals sum, open parentheses, up arrow, shift up arrow, enter. Control C, control V to copy across. Boom, now let's look at the bonus question. Create a row that will calculate the revenue needed to reflect a 20% increase in revenue per quarter. Okay, so how much revenue do we need to see a 20% increase in revenue per quarter? 20% increase. Can't really do that in the first quarter, right? But I can say equals the previous quarter's revenue times 1.2, right? Because if I do just 0.2, I'll just get 20%. I want to see the increase. So it's the previous plus 20%. A quick way to do that is multiply by 1.2, right? And then I can just control C, shift, right arrow, control V to copy that across. So now each uh, item in this row is based on the previous quarter's revenue increased by 20%. And that means we did not, we increased by more than 20% in reality here. So that, my friends, and, and label this row goal. Goal. There we go. There's our goal. And that, my friends, now, and, and uh, as I'm reading the instructions, I'm thinking, maybe, maybe what they really want is to see what we would need if this is, let's say, last year's revenue, what we would need to represent a 20% increase this year in the same quarter. If that's the case, if that's how you read these instructions, again, the instructions are kind of poor, but equals just that quarter's revenue times 1.2, right? And then paste that across. It's sort of irrelevant for the uh, half year average stuff, so we can delete that. So this is what we would do if we were looking at last year's quarterly revenue and trying to figure out what our goal was for this year, and we want to show a 20% increase over the comparable quarter in the previous year. This is what we do. 